Will James become the big fish in the racing pond? Absolutely. Today, he tests his luck versus the AI to see if he might progress. Uh, but instead of swimming, he goes diving? <laughs> <laughs> He's bottling on purpose. Oh my god. I think you qualify for G2 no. at this stage. <laughs> Welcome back, James, for the third episode of your hero's journey. How have you been doing the last couple of weeks when you were practicing at home, hopefully? I improved some lap times, but um, at home, I'm not sure if I've got the right brake settings on, so hopefully it's not going to mess me up too much today. We'll totally put you to the test once more. There were actually some something looking into telemetry data, which should be quite re revealing, I hope. So to show you really in, in detail where the differences lie between what we do on the track with the car. Um, and afterwards, sooner or later, we'll be taking on the AI in the game, probably on one of the lower settings to begin with, but then um, one after another, level them up a bit to see where you stack up against them. Before we take a time for a deeper analysis, we first have to talk about some comments, because yes, guys, we definitely read those. No worries. And we tried to adjust the wheel. We really did. But it just wasn't possible. James was literally too big for a rig with a normal wheel position. Oh, and your shoes, James. We need to talk about those. Please tell me you're not wearing your Jordans again. Hey, I've gone for, the, uh, I've gone for a lower profile SB. We've got the pigeons out. You know, I'm from London after all. Although I might, I might race in socks. We shall see, but uh, it's been all right with these. So uh, I, might, I might take them off. We'll have to see how I feel when we uh, get in the rig. But before we find out, you guys shouldn't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Nice and now quick in the transition. After six laps, James races home with a 1 minute 34. Not a bad time, but let's see what Nielsen has telemetry data have to say about that. So we're using the Racing Sim Tool software, which offers telemetry for a variety of games uh, and also the F1 game, which is why, why we have it here. And let me explain a bit what we're even seeing, because I guess it can be mildly confusing with the whole screen, a lot of information being displayed. OK. Um, so on the left side, first, we see all the lap times that have been set, right? So the first outing here is, is all your laps. And then the second outing here is, I mean, your laps, including mine at, at the bottom there. And so now we've selected one of your laps and one of my laps. Um, so yeah, then we move the cursor a little bit to turn one and then you see, okay, this is turn one on the track map. Maybe now we're also better to paint the track map. Not like we were last episode, I think, yeah. where we both kind of failed. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember that correctly. So this is how it's supposed to look. I forgot about, about that drawing, so thank you for reminding yeah, me. <laughs> yeah, those mild nightmares. <laughs> Just in case you forgot how bad their drawings actually were, here's an image. Back to you, Neil. So yeah, turn one. Um, and you can see the, if we go a bit closer now and zoom in a bit, um, all the data that is the red line is yours. Um, so the throttle down here is yours, the speed up here is yours, the steering there is yours. And the green line then is my speed, my throttle, my steering. So the differences we can see is, um, of course, I'm carrying more speed, but I'm carrying more speed because I just stay flat out. Why can I stay flat out now is because if we look closer at the steering column, then you can see I'm turning in a bit earlier, but I'm also turning in more aggressive. What I mean by that is I turn the steering wheel a bit faster to the desired angle and you give yourself a lot of time to go to the angle that you want to be. Yeah, I'm driving a family car and you're driving a racer. I'm, I think I'm steering a family car and you're steering a racing car. All right, Niels, what is your summary so far? I have to say James is faring quite well. Um, there are a few things in the data that reveal that he understood the basic concepts of the limits of grip, so to say. So he's not asking too much of the car, especially the braking traces are really clean, given that he just started sim racing. Yeah, it looks much better now, right? You're even doing the title line now without me screaming and asking for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you're looking for it. <laughs> Half lift. God damn it. No, but it's still, you're still doing it quicker than before. It's so my brain. It's, it's getting there. Cooperate, you know? Yeah. The voiceover is going to mock me for all this data helping nothing, so please <laughs> be faster. <laughs> No, Niels, I would never do that. I mean, you already got him down to 134. Maybe not consistently, but uh, beggars can't be choosers, right?
You absolute mad lad. Awesome. Hey. 133.7 would have been the perfect lab. Yes, elitistic time would have been great, but I think this is good enough to move on and face the AI. Or do you disagree, James? Um, I'm confident that I can defeat our first robot opponent. So, um, you know, we gotta we got to stop these guys before they advance and take over the world, right? And I think the first way to do that is by racing them in F1. I'm totally optimistic about uh, James making progress. We have to consider how long he's doing the sim racing, really, right? We started, he really started with the series. He was the first time in the car, really. And he has improved something like, I don't know, we're almost hitting 30 seconds now from the very start of the series. So he's making huge progress. And I think what is most important is the consistency has improved massively. So all his laps are now faster than his, his first and second personal bests. Uh, about Skynet, uh, I'm not so sure because, you know, AI is learning at a quick pace as well. We'll have to see if James has the brain capacity to, yeah, out outpace the AI and learning. Defeating Skynet? That makes James the Terminator then. Or he is John Connor and Niels is the Terminator? Not sure. Let's head to the chopper and our trusty Red Bull in that case. But no, seriously, um, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, there will be some changes to his driving. I think focus becomes ever, even more important now because it's very easy to get distracted by the AI and get carried away from what you know how the track works. So um, yeah, doing your thing while everybody's trying to come for you uh, will be the, the difficult part. This is probably illegal what I'm doing. Yeah, showing some authority. Oh, Bottas, you. <laughs> Not obeying team orders. Shit. <laughs> think God that damn it. That was some dirty air, I think. <laughs> <laughs> dirty air? You mean dirty AI. Skynet's already progressing. I thought you were going to stop it, James. Turn the wheel. Forgot to turn the wheel? Uh, but it doesn't look too bad. I mean, third, Hulkenberg is still dreaming of this. But still, it's a podium this time around. Third place in your first okay, race. Congratulations, Jax. Monster job. Everybody knows how hard it is to beat the AI on easy. What a performance. All right, James, so what's your resume? Uh, it's fun. It's I, There's one big question. You know, if, if I have even a slightest opportunity to try and overtake somebody, I'm kind of bonkers. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, tr I'm going for it because I really like love that kind of thing. But I'm destroying my car in the process, so I need to turn think about when <laughs> either turn off the damage or figure out when is the best time to try and overtake, and also keep an eye on like situation of cars around me and when I need to brake. The main thing is um, just trying to avoid collisions. We are currently running the AI on 39, which is the highest of the lowest settings, if that makes sense. Yeah. So we have easy, medium, and hard, and it's the ha uh, hardest easy setting, so okay. to say. So we're not at the very bottom here. We're not starting from, from scratch, which is, which is a positive sign, I think. I uh, The robots are not reigning, reigning supreme over me at the moment. Again, it is a, a question of self-destruction. It's like I'm, I'm uh, launching bombs on myself at, at present. So if I can stop doing that, then the robots will certainly be defeated. Okay, James, this really is sounding more and more like the Terminator. So show us that you're like Sarah. Destroy them, robots. Final race of the day. If I come top three, I'm happy. I think I'm either coming top three or I'm wiping out. Overall, I think transition from time trial, uh, time trial to AIs or working with AIs or working against AIs has, has worked quite well. Uh, it was really quick when he knew, ah, okay, I should be distracted by them too much. I just need to stick to what I know already. And he's getting there ever more. Uh, and once he starts really driving his times again, he will certainly also improve his lap times right back where he left off in the time trials and then we're hoping to to see the fastest lap against those AIs. James' game face is on. He looks definitely more serious than Harry Potter's uncle. So let's jump into the race. Yeah, remember the brake markers. Fair enough, this looks better and better. It seems like Niels maybe isn't the worst coach. There you go, mate. Ooh, ballsy. <laughs> That's me trying to be good. <laughs> More. No. Easy, easy. Oh. 
Oh, man. I type back everything positive I said. Niels very well may be the worst coach. Let's wrap this one up here. Next try, please. Oh, I can't handle the fact I'm in first place. Take care. Yeah, it's good to not overdo it when you're on the grass, so this was fine. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! There's the, the red arrows. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you better break. Wow! That is what I call racing on the edge. Good thing that that's Bottas and not Hamilton, because you know how that one would have turned out. This is a fight. Whoa! Careful while the car's coming. Oh, man. Take care of the rear tires. They're really slippery now. <laughs> Nobody will notice. No. <laughs> we cut that out. Definitely not. <laughs> we'll leave it in. But this isn't breakfast, James. Get yourself together. Oh, I saw man. that coming. <laughs> Well, well, you're not the only one, Niels. Let's finish this. Tire will be hot, take care. I broke that time instead of yeah. driving into <laughs> him. See, I'm capable of learning. <laughs> <clears throat> turned late, I turned well, late. I feel like it wasn't harsh enough on the brakes initially because the brake point looked fine. <clears throat> <laughs> well, I learned that driving into the back of people is not going to help me. The race is finished, at least something. But with this kind of racing, I'm not seeing an improvement in the rating so far. Yeah, uh, uh, no, I think we'll just change the scale and then it's 7 out of 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's really smart. <laughs> 7 out of 20? Oh man, seems like James still has a long way to go. But how bad is it really? Tell us, Niels. So, okay, well, let's start with a good thing, right? I heard you do this. Um, hot lapping wise, time trial. I think we saw major improvements still compared to last time. And I think it was really good that we had a chance to look at the data and yeah, just get a view, like really picture, being able to picture it. What was the difference between a really fast time and, and what you were still doing? Yeah. So we're looking at the throttle and steering there. And I think you could take away something from that. And I could see immediately once you jumped in the rig afterwards again, that you try to change these things. And I think by now your breaking points, for example, they are much more consistent. They are much later than at the very beginning because now you're slamming the brake really hard, for example. So I think this was a major improvement. Um, and then, yeah, we had to move on to the race, which didn't go to plan, maybe. It was a bit destruction derby, a little bit. This is probably illegal what I'm doing. Yeah, showing some authority. I think I lacked the respect that I need to break before I drive into the person in front of me. You think so, James? Do you really? So I think this is something that you learn along the way, that the AI behaves weird sometimes and ways you can exploit it and, and work around them, for example. So yeah, given all that, I think just finishing the race was, was good already. I think it was a bit harder than it needed to be in the end. So um, we, we have things to work on with the AIs before we jump on the online stuff. Yeah, I think a bit more experience driving versus the AI, I'll stop. Even if, if it's because of the AI or not, I'll be able to avoid catastrophic mistakes, I feel like. Because yeah. we there were like two occasions where I had a big spin out after a collision. So I think I'll be more prepared for those. So I think on the time trial was certainly an improvement. Um, and I, as yeah, steps has to be, have to become smaller. Right? If we say 10-10 is Freddy Rasmussen, then we have to take it slow. Um, so let's say you've certainly made up another point. So let's put you 7 out of 10 or something on the scale that we started with. Let's just stick to it. Might have been, we started maybe off on, on a too high rating there, but okay. we just work along that now. Sounds good to me. <laughs> and, and certainly on the multiplayer rating, now that we started with it, and given that we started on the 3, starting the series with a time trial kind of, Let's start with the three here on the multiplayer stuff as well, and then we can still aim for a seven there as well, I guess. Next time on Hero's Journey, it's time for James to show us his online pros. 
But don't worry, he will still dive bomb people and even get banned from a match. <laughs> See you guys there.